in our final celebration of Black History Month, we sat down with community leader, Cardiff City supporter and friend of Cardiff City Foundation, Ali Abdi, to find out more about his story. My name is Ali Abdi, I grew up in Grangetown. I was actually born in a hospital in, uh, in Camden, uh, the St Davis Hospital, back in 1985. Um, and yeah, my parents are from Somaliland, Island, uh, Hargeisa uh, particularly. And yeah, there's, a, there's a big community here uh, from Somaliland Island who live here in Cardiff. And yeah, I've always lived in Grangetown. And uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, I've never moved out and got lots of friends, family, and I continue to, to work as well in the same community where I live. We then asked Ali exactly how his career started. I think when I was about 14, 15, I used to attend uh, the local youth club in my community. It was called the Boys and Girls Club. It wasn't far from where I lived. It was in the lane, the Earl Street uh, in Grangetown. I used to attend there regularly, like three evenings a week after school. I used to go home, get changed quickly and shoot over there. I stayed there till like nine o'clock in the evening. Uh, and I think just, yeah, the, the youth workers there had a really good impact on my life. Um, and then I think I started volunteering when I was in year 11. And uh, my college years started to volunteer uh, for the junior evening. And I was just given lots of responsibility and from there I was invited to go on a youth work course uh, and then I could just see that I was having a positive effect upon young people. Uh, their families would uh, contact the centre, reach out to me, uh, just the way my parents and my family used to reach out to the youth workers that were there when I was growing up. And so I think that all of that just inspired me to want to continue to stay in this uh, in this environment and this work. Uh, and plus I think I had a uh, particular thing because I was having an impact upon young people in my in my community, kids from Grangetown who attended this youth club and I was supporting Grangetown kids who were all who were actually from all walks of life. I just felt like, oh this is great, like you know, I'm helping my community, you know, so yeah, and I'm still kinda in that space now. Ali was recognised for his work with Black Asian minority ethnic communities in Wales in the 2020 New Year's Honours list when he received an Empire Medal. He went on to tell us how it felt to be recognised. I still don't know who nominated me. It's still a mystery. And in fact, uh, because of COVID, I still haven't collected it either. There aren't many people in my community who have uh, a British Empire medal. And I think, again, for young people and representation, I think it's hugely important for them to, to see that. There are also people in their walk of life, if you like, or their community that have this incredible award, if you like, uh, from the Queen. And um, that they know somebody. You know, when they hear about people who got MBE, when they hear about people who got MBEs and OBEs, at least they can now say, you know what, I know somebody who got that and this is why he got that for. So we asked who inspires him as his role models when he was growing up. I had some fantastic role models, um, uh, from um, family members to people who were really close to me in my community. If I talk about my family, for instance, my, my, my dad, uh, he was a merchant Navy seaman, so he was like, he came here in the 50s and he was really hard working. Um, you know, we used to bring coal and other food stuff and whatever was on ships, you know, into the into the docks. Uh, and there was lots of people on his ship from all walks of life again. And um, yeah, he was fantastic, you know, in terms of growing up, having, you know, a hard working person to look up to think, you know what, that's, you know, I want to be like that. And uh, yeah, he's still with us today. And then from my youth worker, uh, Steve Kyra, who actually also has a, a British Empire medal. So at least, you know, there was somebody there. And again, I was like, wow, do you know what? That's an incredible uh, thing to have. You know, in terms of the Somali community, uh, my family, Abdi Karim, he opened the first Somali advice centre, uh, again, back in the 80s when the refugees uh, first came uh, from Somalia and Somaliland. Uh, and he supported them for over 30 years uh, with their applications to stay here, uh, to reunite them with their families. Uh, to support them with, you know, benefit advice. Many of them were uh, sofa surfing and homeless as well, so he'd support them with homeless applications. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, you know, people like that. Uh, Uzo Iwobi, they're women from my, from my so if, say from the Bain community who are massive. So Uzo Iwobi is an equalities um, uh, officer with uh, Welsh government. Uh, and she's massive during the COVID. She helped bring lots of different groups and communities together to try and um, make the, you know, this issue with COVID better for minority communities because they hit the, our communities the hardest. Um, you know, Vaughan Geffen, our minister in the Senate, he's the only black minister uh, in the Senate. Uh, that's massive, you know. Uh, and, you know, uh, there's, in terms of representation, role models, he, he's up there, you know, and we need more of them. I think the, uh, the, the last, the former Lord Mayor, Dan Dyaf, uh, when George Floyd uh, died and um, the Black Lives Matter movement took place, he was hugely instrumental 
in um, uh, getting Cardiff Council to um, introduce a race equality task force uh, to, to look at themselves and see how they can make uh, things better, but also tackle some of the statues and street names uh, in Cardiff uh, that resonated with the slave trade that, you know, that don't sit well with us today when it comes to, to look at their history. And so, yeah, they're, they're a real, um, you know, giants who I stand on their shoulders today. <laughs> Ali has links with both Cardiff City and Cricket Wales and went on to discuss the importance of sport in creating chances for all communities. I think it's massive the work uh, I do with Cricket Wales uh, and, the, and the Cardiff City uh, Foundation has been incredible. Both of them I sit on the Equality Steering Group as well. I'm well placed if you like with my work in Grangetown uh, and, and it does span across Butetown as well and Riverside and these are community, there are communities living there from uh, South Asian backgrounds, Black African communities, uh, from the Yemen, uh, Caribbean communities, as well as you know our white Welsh communities. But there's a lot of diversity there, and so I'm able to bring real insight into those meetings from people who I meet on a daily basis. And using sports as a tool, I think is, is is a hugely important, and it has definitely helped me in tackling a whole host of issues uh, and uh, in bringing young people and communities together. Uh, it's helped me bring young people to the stadium for the first time and open their eyes up to watching Cardiff City play. Um, and similarly with cricket, the young boys and girls who have taken to watch uh, cricket for the first time at the Glamorgan, at the Sophia Garden Stadium uh, to watch Glamorgan. And again, you know, just seeing their eyes light up in their first matches is always incredible. Uh, and we continue to do that today. There's some real talent uh, in the communities uh, where these young people are from and it'd be incredible to see one of them or a few of them even one day run out uh, onto the Cardiff City pitch. Uh, representing Cardiff City. Black History Month means to be a um, celebration of the rich contribution of uh, black and minority communities uh, to the world, to Wales, uh, to Cardiff. I think uh, Black History Month is really important to help uh, tackle um, uh, issues around when particularly people are trying to create division um, and, 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 and really create inclusion. Um, I think people really shouldn't shy away from, um, you know, celebrating Black History Month in organisations, even if they feel like their organisation isn't diverse enough. I think they should really uh, take the lead and reach out to organisations and institutions that are running workshops and uh, and, uh, and have got campaigns going on. Uh, and if, if they have resources, even sponsor an award or sponsor an event. Um, you know, the work, you know, Show Racing Red Card do, uh, Race Council of Cymru, the Black History Wales. Uh, you know, I think it's really important uh, to get behind organisations like this who are really championing in and are working hard to educate uh, not just young people, you know, communities, um, people in the workforces to make equalities a reality. I mean, Canada, like I said, have got a strong history and I think sometimes that history um, doesn't get enough exposure uh, and I think we need to definitely celebrate that a lot. So I think if we definitely put it on the agenda more often than just in October, it increased, if you like, tourism to the area because people would want to go and visit. You know, why did minorities first come here? Where were the what were their rich contribution? And but if you you know today there isn't a place or a space where um, uh, all of that sits, if you like, uh, and it, it is a real shame. But I think uh, there is effort to try and bring that about. Uh, so people can really then come and uh, celebrate it, come and engage with it. But I think, yeah, you know, having a place for um, uh, black history where people can come and engage and celebrate, uh, tourists can come and have a conversation with, like they have in like other places in, in, in Britain, I think it's hugely important. Uh, and we're missing the trick if we don't deliver it. <laughs> My fondest memory of Canada City, I was actually here uh, when it got promoted and it was and it was an exciting game. It was nil-nil, but um, you know, the score came in from the other game, which meant, you know, we just needed a point practically to, to go through and everyone just, you know, flooded a pitch. So if they're not giving fines out for that, I was one of those guys who ran on a pitch and was celebrating and, and running around, uh, you know, like, like, like headless chickens, you know, celebrating uh, Cardiff going to the Premier League. And it was genuinely... Yeah, uh, yeah. The more the more recent history has been fantastic to see Cardiff City in the Premier League, and hopefully, you know, one day they'll get back there again.